everyone, Christina here, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own clock using your own tech laser. Now, I will admit, this is my first time ever making a clock. It's been on a list of projects I've been wanting to try for a while. So it was totally a trial and error project for me, but I did learn a lot, and I will be sharing my tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. I would like to note beforehand that I did have this file set up but a quick rundown of what everything means. The blue layer that we have right here is corresponding with the 1 8 inch wood that I'm gonna be using for the top of the clock. And the red over here is gonna be the bottom. Now you're gonna also see there are a couple of additional elements on here. The one that's rectangular with all the little circles is what I'm actually gonna be using to size the center of the clock. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the set that I got from Amazon actually did not come with any dimensions or anything. The listing was deactivated. So all of this is a shot in a dark and trial and error. So bear with me here. And the bottom element that is circular is what I'm actually gonna be using as a riser because the material that I have on hand isn't quite thick enough and we're gonna need to bump up the clock a little bit to get all of the little arms to go on correctly. So again, this is all gonna be trial and error, but I'm fairly confident that I can figure something out to make it work. Let me just mention that this top piece, the rectangle with the little circles, is what I'm going to actually be starting with because I want to find out the correct diameter and size that I need to make the hole for the clock to go on the mechanism. How I came to the conclusion of what size holes to use is I tried to find a similar listing on Amazon that looked like the kit that I got. and. Some of these actually contained dimensions, so I used my best judgment and I just kind of modified it from there. And then once we find the correct hole to use for the clock and the mechanism, we can apply that to the clock and the little riser below. I don't want to waste too much time in this video doing all the tests, so I'm just going to show a quick clip of what it looks like and how I tested it. But aside from that, we're going to be following the standard procedure that I follow in all of my videos with the loading the material, the framing, and all of that fun stuff. Once our test is complete, I'm going to start by moving the red circle below and off the artboard so I can focus on the blue design which we're going to be cutting out first. I'm going to start with the blue because there are some extra steps needed that is going to take up some time such as the painting. So I'm just going to do what I normally do. I'm going to frame it, make sure it's in the right location on my laser. And then I'm going to send it. And again, we're going to also do the same thing with the red as well. Good general rule every time you load up a new material is to always make sure you check your focal height. I mentioned this in all my videos, but I can't stress this enough. This is the kit that I actually got from Amazon. We have all our little arms here. And again, the listing that I originally had had no directions, instructions, and it was deactivated. So I'm gonna be referencing some other listings that look similar. And it's looking like everything kind of comes into place. We have uh, these little pieces that go on and then this clip that goes on. Um. <laughs> Now time to clean. I clean all the edges and the borders of my pieces with rubbing alcohol and a paper towel or cloth. As you can see here, there's a lot of gunk coming off it, so it's a good rule of thumb to get into. Gets rid of the stickiness. Because we have some small text that we're gonna need to paint, I found this foam tape method to be quite effective. All you have to do is place your little pieces on top of the foam and stick it in a box or a, an old piece of wood that you're gonna be using to paint on. And it works great. You'll probably notice I did forget a couple of numbers. They got lost in the abyss of my work table. <laughs> so I did actually paint those separately. So, so don't worry, we still have them. Thank you. 
It is raining outside, so I'm trying to get this done quickly. The area that I normally paint in, I can't because it's all wet. So I'm just uh, making do with what I have. Now it's time to glue. And I've been using a new glue here. It's actually called Starbond Medium, and I've really, really been liking this. I'm just gonna be adding little dots along the outline, and then I'm going to be sticking it to the, the bottom layer. Then I'm gonna be adding some pressure and weight on top to adhere it better. I have a couple of these cutting boards I have lying around that I will be using as the weight. And once that looks good and everything seems stuck together, I'm gonna be adding all of the numbers. And again, same process, I'm gonna be adding little dots on them and gluing them down. I'll also be adding the pressure and the weight again, just to make sure that it settles and adheres nicely. Now for the riser. Because the mechanism is so small, I actually added some of this Starbond glue to the bottom to get it to stick nicely. So there's no movement. It won't move if you try to hang it up on a wall or anything. I'm gonna be sticking the actual clock to the riser. I am gonna be gluing it. So there's no potential of it falling apart. I know there are special tools that allow you to make threaded holes in your clocks and I don't have any of those available. I am making do with what I have and, and it does seem to work. Again, I'm gonna be adding some pressure. I would like to note as it's drying and I'm looking over all the different arms that go with this kit, a lot of them are bent and they're quite flimsy. So if you're looking to really get into this as a hobby, I recommend going with a more durable kit. Out of all of these handles, I was really only able to use one set and that was the smallest set. And it was the only one that wasn't bent and doesn't seem to really bend. So I'm kind of limited with my options here, but again, it could have just been the kit that I have. And these are the little arms that I'm gonna be using. Again, they're the only ones that aren't bent, so I'm okay with that. And per the instructions that I found online from the other listings, it does say that we're going to want to use the smaller one first. So that would be this one. Make sure that it is stuck on there tight. You don't really want any free movement. Once we're done with that, we're going to stick on the larger one. And just lay it over on top like this. Make sure it's on nicely. We have it aligned to 12 o'clock like the instructions say. And then the final piece is this little handle and it sticks right in the, the little hole right here. And again, we wanna make sure they're all aligned correctly. It's stuck on there good. And let's test this out, let's put a battery in. And the one that I got in particular does take a double A. And just pop it on in. There we go, let's see. It's moving, all right, yeah, this is good. But now for the actual test. Let's make sure that it continues to move correctly. So it's been a couple hours since I put the battery in my clock and it looks like there is an issue. The smallest handle is actually going all the way over here. It should actually be four o'clock. So something isn't right. I'm gonna have to do some troubleshooting and testing to figure it out. And I did actually figure it out. The issue was is the small arm wasn't on correctly. It needed to be pushed in a little bit more so there wasn't any free movement. Once I did that, it seemed to fix the issue. And the clock has actually been going for a few days now and it seems to be telling time correctly. So I'm gonna say this project was actually a success.